Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and today we'll be taking a look at the VRMs on the Crosshair 6 Hero, which is the top of the line board for AM4 from Asus. Uh, it costs around $250, which uh, for AM4 is actually a really high price point, but if you compare it to like Intel motherboards, it's sort of upper mid range uh, in terms of price point, whereas the feature set is off it offers is actually really, really good. Though we will only be going in detail over the VRMs as well, uh, pointing out some interesting little extras for overclocking that this motherboard includes, as it is an ROG board, which is sort of the overclocking-centric division of Asus. So with that out of the way, let's get straight to the VRMs. The V-Core VR, uh, v -V -Core VRM is this part of the CPU VRM right here. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight phases for your V-Core. And the other four phases right next to that are the SOC voltage. So that's the Ryzen system on a chip uh, part of the CPU. And that is basically Ryzen integrates a lot more uh, of the of sort of motherboard functionalities into the CPU. So you have the usual, the integrated memory controller as well as uh, PCIe, as well as some PCIe connectivity. But it also integrates M.2, U.2, uh, USB 3.1, audio, and Super I.O. So you have a lot of things built right into the chip that would usually have been uh, supplied by the motherboard. So that's why this is no longer... Which is why you have vCore and the SOC voltage instead of, say, uh, system agent like you have on Intel boards where that's literally just... Or iGPU voltage. Uh, is the equivalent for Z270. So, yeah, that's the SOC voltage, and that's made up of four phases, as you can clearly see up there. The controller for the entire VRM is this chip right here, and that is a ASP1405. Uh, it belongs into the DigiPlus line of Asus parts, and it is a custom part made for Asus by International Rectifier. There is no public data sheet available for it. However, I can tell you that it is a 4 plus 2 phase voltage controller. And we've seen it on some previous ROG boards on the Z270 side, as well as possibly even before that. Though I wouldn't, like, I haven't seen the older ROG boards, so I, I can't really tell you about those. Now then, this is a 4 plus 2 phase voltage controller, and as I've already said, the V-Core is 8, and the SOC is 4 phases. So Asus does have to use a doubling scheme for, to achieve the phase count that the motherboard actually comes with. This is done using International Rectifier IR3599 ICs, which you can find on the back of the board. Unfortunately, I won't be showing those to you. Uh, and those basically take one PWM signal in, and they cut the frequency in half and split it between two phases. So, essentially, you you get, like, a proper doubling scheme. It's not something like where you hook up one driver mos uh, one driver chip to uh, two MOSFETs or, well, two phases, which doesn't really achieve the, the, the same effect as multiple phases. So this VRM is comparable to a true eight-phase VRM, uh, until you really, really start cranking up the frequency, because the International Rectifier 3599 doublers top out at 800 kilohertz switching frequency output. So you can't actually go above 800 kilohertz switching frequency. Not that that should really matter, as most motherboards ship at 200 to 300 kilohertz, and really, really cranking up the switching frequency doesn't really net you any gains, even in extreme overclocking scenarios, as VRM, like high end VRMs these days, uh, with, you know, hi uh, high phase counts like eight phases doing 800 kilohertz uh, can handle transient loads very, very well as is. So there really shouldn't be a reason to worry about the fact that this VRM tops out at 800 kilohertz compared to some other designs which might top out uh, higher for the same given phase count. Now then if we take a look at the actual MOSFETs that Asus is using, which are these chips right here, uh, these are Texas Instruments Next FETs. So these integrate the, both the high side and the low side MOSFET. And the part number for these is CSD87350. These are rated to do 40 amps at 125 degrees centigrade and go up to 1.5 megahertz switching frequency. So they are very, like, 
very, very nice parts. They are extremely efficient, achieving 90% efficiency at around 25 amps. They do, of course, uh, drop in efficiency as you approach 40 amps. They do not improve their current throughput as you lower the operating temperature as they are package limited, not silicon limited. So basically you can run them at 125 degrees just the same as you can run them at like 20 degrees. Uh, not that they should run at 125 degrees as the VRM is, uh, you know, with the phase count that Asus has gone for, this VRM is capable of supplying 320 amps on the V-Core voltage. So you should never actually be reaching that 40 amps per phase limitation that this VRM design has here. And as such, it should never really get that hot. So, you know, very nice job from Asus uh, on the VRM. This is perfectly capable of handling any air-cooled overclocking, water-cooled overclocking, even LN2-cooled overclocking. This really shouldn't have any issues. Uh, interestingly enough, this is also the same exact VRM design that you would see on a lot of Z270 ROG boards where it is, unsurprisingly, a lot more overkill than it is here, because Zen is an 8-core and therefore uh, tends to be more power-hungry as you really crank up the crank up the overclocks. The SoC uses the exact same MOSFET and so ends up with a 160-amp power capa uh, current capability, also at 125 degrees. So, really, this VRM right here is really, really overkill. And especially the SoC part at 160 amps is kind of ridiculous. And I am kind of suspecting that the reason why the system on a chip section of the VRM is so like capable of delivering such high currents is that in the future when we start seeing Ryzen based APUs the GPU portion of those will run off of the SOC voltage not the vCore and there's a good chance that some of the integrated GPUs we will be seeing later down the line might actually be very very powerful both in terms of power draw as well as performance so the high phase counts that you see on Zen motherboards compared to say like Z270 which usually only uses two phases for the iGPU, it can be, you know, can probably be explained by the difference in the GPU cores that will be coming on the APUs. So, that covers what powers the CPU, so let's move on to what powers your RAM. The DDR4 VRM is located right over here. Unfortunately, I have no idea what it's controlled by, not that it matters too much, since RAM is very very low power it is a two-phase vrm which is actually a higher phase count than what you will find on most other am4 boards most other am4 boards opt for a single phase design but asus has opted for a two-phase the mosfets right here are nico semiconductor uh which is a budget mosfet maker is is one way to put it um so nico semiconductor PEA16BA. You can't find a data sheet for this MOSFET, but you can find a data sheet for its predecessor, which isn't a whole lot uh, worse in terms of specifications. So for my calculations, I use the data sheet for the previous version of this MOSFET, not the PEA16. I use the PE616BA. Uh, so uh, yeah, which was recommended to me by a, a you know, by an ASUS engineer when I asked about what the what the part numbers are here. So this VRM setup using, as you can clearly see, one, two, three, four MOSFETs is good for 34 amps, uh, 34 amps at 125 degrees centigrade, and you know, is ridiculous overkill for DDR4. Uh, as DDR4 pulls very very little power, with most sticks pulling between two to four watts. Uh, for each stick. So even if you have four sticks in there, you're only going to be pulling around 16 watts at 1.2 to like 1.35 volts. Um, so very, very low current demand for the VRM that Asus has opted for. Uh, it, you know, there's no heatsink on this VRM for a reason. It's because it really doesn't need to do that much work. So Nice job from Asus there as well, and the fact that it is a two-phase could lead to this board having some memory overclocking advan uh, some advantage in memory overclocking compared to other boards which don't necessarily use uh, a two-phase design, which would then suffer from slightly worse voltage regulation. So, 
that covers all the VRMs that you really, really need to worry about on this board. Uh, interesting little overclocking feature that Asus uh, puts on their ROG series motherboards is this is this little hole inside the CPU socket. So that exists to give you to allow extreme LN2 overclockers to basically put a thermocouple in right behind the CPU to measure if there is uh, to basically check the condition of the thermal paste between the LN2 pot and the CPU itself because sometimes the thermal paste fails when overclocking and this is a really good way to de detect any major temperature dif difference between the CPU and the LN2 pot which has a thermocouple which most of those have thermocouples built in as is already so this allows you to check the sort of thermal paste condition because the CPU's own internal thermal sensors do not work under LN2 as LN2, they're not calibrated to work at those temperatures, so they read all kinds of random garbage. Um, so, yeah, you also do get a postcode on this board. There are uh, power on, reset, and other, you know, useful overclocking, overclocker-friendly buttons located lower down on the board, which I can't show you because this is where the photo ends. And that pretty much covers it for everything you need to know. Thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe, leave a comment down below if you have any questions. Uh, you can go check out the full Ryzen review up on the Gamers Nexus website. And please do consider donating to the Gamers Nexus Patreon uh, to, of course, support what we do here. Thank you very much for watching, and see you next time.